I had mentioned the idea of looking for um, education opportunities, investment opportunities here in South Africa. I really felt that this was a, a very key area and we should invest in this because we have a manufacturing facility here in South Africa. Uh, we're a very technically driven company, uh, very research oriented, and we need technical people to be successful in the future. And so we realized that investing in education and, and bringing up a younger generation of educated technical people in agriculture will benefit us long term. This is quite a unique pro project because we have got Becker Underwood coming on board and then the, the Department of Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries also coming on board in a joint project to train students in, di in different areas, mainly in the area of agricultural sciences and toxicological studies, just to plug the gaps in terms of skill shortage. Historically there has been a poor connotation with agriculture, maybe a poor perception. In the general public um, would think if, if you mention agriculture to general public man in the street, um, my, many of them would still have a perception of a farmer sitting on a tractor plowing a field. So we know there's, there's shortages of skilled people in, in government. We know there's these problems, but uh, we're helping to address these, not just for ourselves, but for other companies and, and just close the, close the gap in terms of uh, scarce resources and lack of skills. It took us about eight months. We went through various uh, ideas as far as who we might partner with, where we might look to invest in education. Yeah, the University of Pretoria has a well-established uh, history of uh, programs within agriculture, and specifically programs that uh, attract students from across Africa to come and study on postgraduate level within our programs. It has uh, departments, well-established departments within agricultural economics, uh, plant production, soil science, animal sciences as, as well as uh, food science. It's in the capital, uh, it's got a very good veterinary school, in fact the only one uh, in South Africa and uh, we've got multidisciplinary teams working in agriculture, uh, medical science, veterinary science, so it's perfect for a crop protection focus and animal health and for developing capacity within the Department of Agriculture. We are how shall I put it, very hands-on. Hands and specifically in, in our department of microbiology and plant pathology, we tend to uh, do research which is both basic and applied. And in that way we're interacting a lot with industry uh, in terms of practical application in agriculture. So the selection process began by looking at suitable candidates that we already had on the system. We didn't open this up to the whole university or to everyone because we would have been flooded with lots and lots of applications. So we thought let's look at the applicants we have at the moment, see if we can find people suitable. If not, then we would open it up to the broader community. And fortunately, we had about 20 CVs of promising candidates. We had a certain list type of criteria of the type of student we were looking for. Um, and we went through the CVs and we found four really good students who we thought we could, we could, we could help. And for the next six months, they are going to develop their research projects. They're going to interact with us, interact with their professors. They're going to develop the, the platform for what they're going to be doing. And we'll be there, we'll guide them, we'll assist them, and we'll watch them progress. Teachers know the fact that, you know, plants can actually get sick. That really fascinated me. Because I thought, you know, only human beings and animals, you know, can really get sick. And to know that a plant can have uh, what you call an immune system you know, really fascinated me and I wanted to know more about it. My mom used to grow vegetables at home, so I kind of liked it when she, she sent me to get water to irrigate. And then when they grew, I liked the way they were growing, you know, from growing, from sowing the seed until, so I liked it and then that's why I considered it. I think I've always been interested in just helping, like looking at the health aspect of things and I think in all, in everything that I've been doing, I've been really concentrating in how and how humans are uh, affected, and also animals. Like this, uh, in my masters, I'm looking at animals and seeing how I can, I can, I can use plants to sort of help in the healthcare.
And the way we've structured it is that every three months we will meet with the students, both myself and a representative from DAF and a representative from the university. We form a joint committee and we will interview with the students, we'll meet with them, we'll see the progress of their projects. They'll present to us where they are, how it's going, what problems they have, how, th how things are progressing, where they may be going in the next three months. And we'll have hands-on experience of exactly where they're going and what they're doing. And the fact that there's not a, a lot of students studying agriculture, it's, it's quite unfortunate. Somebody can look at it as an opportunity or rather an advantage that you know it's there's no a lot of competition out there in terms of work and everything but then it's it's unfortunate because you know um, we need to solve this problem in south africa agriculture is not way up there compared to engineering all those mining engineers and everything chemical engineering so they want to go for those instead of agriculture they think if you do agriculture you just end up being a farmer I come from, from a village where my, 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 my parents had a little to give, you know, to start me off at tertiary. So I had to, my first year, I had to look for funding and that was a little bit tricky. From my background, my parents didn't have money to take me further. So they sacrificed for me to do undergrad and I, I had that urge to learn more. So this gave me this opportunity that I will study even more and I will expand my knowledge. Maybe after four years when we, we get the graduates finishing their projects, we may start seeing the benefits of it because then we, we are aiming at looking at can we employ these people? Can they add value into the registration process? In that way, the impact is going to be huge because then you've got people who are trained in the relevant skills that are going to have significant impact in the country people who are going to represent the country in different multilateral organizations. So the impact is going to be huge. So we, we are really looking forward for, to, 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 to this initiative to bear fruit. As a young researcher, I mean, I want to go out there and, you know, when you're going into industry, you want to be somebody who's more experienced. And if uh, programs like this um, get to introduce us to the real world and get to hold our hands, give us the finances and everything, when I go out there, I'll be really confident about who I am, what I do and what I really want to do for this country as a whole. I'll be happy to, to work with DAF because they'll be giving me more experience, like I'll be hands on in the field like doing the work that I've been trained for. I know how difficult it is to, to look for a job, especially if you don't have too much experience and all that. So to get an opportunity like this and be offered a job, it's a good thing for me. Well, when we were drafting the legal agreement, the, the intellectual property lawyer of the, of the university, he asked us at the end, what's in it for you? Why are you doing this? Because for most people, it seems like you do this for commercial gain. And we said to him, that's not what we're here for. We're here to help, we're here to build up, we're here to address skill shortages. We're here to invest our money into resources other than profits. Long term, the, 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 the benefit may be that other international investors may look at South Africa as, an, as a destination of choice in terms of investment opportunities. In that way, you can get the economy growing because then you've got investors setting up operations in South Africa. Then you get more people employed. And then if you've got good policies, then you've got sustainable development being taken care of. And then that way, then South Africa becomes a, a shining example on how things can be done. <sighs> oh my God, those next two years are going to be so interesting.